What is good? Fuck. Good. <laughs> Everyone. Shoobs here. <laughs> this is so scuffed. <laughs> What is good everyone? Shoops here. Well, new year, same me. Not gonna lie, I took a bit of a extended break with some stagnant uploads for the last few weeks due to the holidays and while I was gone, a bunch of reviews got held off and now uh, I got a bunch of keyboards to build and do reviews for. So I'm going to bring you guys back to back to back to back keyboard reviews for the next two weeks some might be ones you guys wanted to see so my schedule will be glacier 80 for this video class 65 for the next then the new mode 80 and next finally ending it off with the owl risu for the last review so let's get these two weeks of reviews rolling today we will be taking a look at this absolute beauty of a tkl this is the oh my god it's a flashbang this is the glacier 80 let's open it up first and see what we're working with but that is a lot oh Oh my god, that is a lot of foam. This is the Glacier 80 by Create Keeps, who brought you the Thera 75. I didn't get to check that board out, but I heard some really good things about it. So I'm pretty excited to check this one out. And uh, this is, wait for it, Plateless. Hell yeah. Uh, this is a Plateless TKL utilizing gaskets, uh, and I'm quite excited for this because you know me, I am a complete simp for plateless boards and overall the color i got is the baby blue one and it's looking quite quite nice it actually looks really sick let's see the side profile very clean and the back oh it's a mirror finished back got be careful but uh it's still got the plastic wrap on here i'm gonna leave that on because uh because my hands are very cursed and uh it's gonna ruin it as soon as i take it off I'll take it off at the very end, right after the build is complete though. So a little bit more detail on the board itself. This is slated to run in mid-January of this new year, 2022, uh, retailing for around 400 buckaroos. All the colors will be two-tone with a silver bottom besides white and will be available with a gray top, black, burgundy, light blue, and navy, and the white being a white top and white bottom. There is a shit ton of foam options. Uh, this, when I opened the box, there was a lot in there, so you'll be able to tune the sound however you really want. And like I mentioned before, this is a plateless board, so you will not need a plate, but it will have an option for a PC or palm plate if that's what you prefer. And yeah, that's pretty much it with the details of the board. Uh, let's get to the build. So before we actually start the build, let's uh, showcase some of the stuff you get in here, which is a lot of foam. We got ourselves the screws and the bump-ons, the JST and daughter board. What the hell is this? Oh, this is the foam for the nav cluster. So something interesting about this board, I've seen it on the IM Plus by Matrix, but the uh, PCB for the main area and the nav cluster is separate so you actually break it off and you mount it separately uh, this actually creates a softer uh, typing feel because there's less you know uh, contact so it's flexier on here and on here uh, which is pretty pretty cool but like what I was saying there is PE foam plate foam PCB foam bottom case foam there's literally foam for everything uh, here is the plates. You see the separate nav cluster. So here's the PCB. This is PCB mounted. You see the gasket areas for on the PCB itself and uh, you break this part away just like so and it's separate so it goes like that. That is that is pretty cool. Welcome to another episode of Shoob's Talks without a fucking script. Hope you guys had a great holiday as well as a new year. Uh, just the issue that I wanted to talk about with this build. You see me using the PE foam right here, 
but this was not by choice. I actually had to use the PE foam because the switch cutout tolerances were way too loose for it to not, it just would just fall right off the PCB. And it literally broke my brain. Um, honestly, going with the PE foam, it stayed in place, so we had to do it. Besides that, the build process for the board is pretty simple. Uh, it is just like any other gasket mounted board. You install the gaskets on the top and bottom of the case and the uh, PCB just sits in between those gaskets. So for the switches, we're going with cotton candy switches looped with 3204 and filmed with deskies. These are a light full nylon JWK tactile and are actually one of my new favorite light tactiles right now. I really dig them. And for the set, we are going to go with GMK Moto. Uh, and yeah, that's basically the build. We're gonna have three more builds coming within the next week and a half. Oh my god. Ah. I don't even have enough switches. I got to loop switches. Oh no. I got to loop stabs. I don't even know if I have enough stabs as well. <laughs> this is what I get for procrastinating these reviews. Well, here is the board. Not gonna lie, uh, this board definitely does look pretty damn clean, especially with uh, GMK Moto. Nice. This is not the most minimalistic design, but it does have quite a striking look to it. On top, you see the little glacier cutout. I think that's pretty cool. Like I mentioned earlier, I did run into some issues with the PCB having too loose of a tolerance for the switch legs. Uh, at least for these cotton candy switches are made by JWK. I also tried different switches, but it was also too loose, which made doing the plateless build a major pain in the ass but we went with some PE foam in the end to make the switches fit but uh, without further ado let's get to the typing test Shit. So, my thoughts on the board. Damn son, this shit is bussin'. Now again a disclaimer, I am a huge sucker for plateless boards and this is one of them. In terms of the typing experience, it is bouncy and flexy, like very very bouncy and flexy. Probably one of the bounciest TKLs I've personally tried to date and to be quite honest with you, uh, you feel a crazy amount of vibrations upon bottom out which is honestly very very fun to use. I think this could even be bouncier with no PE foam but you know we had to use it because of the loose switches. Additionally this board sounds very tight. That's actually quite surprising with the amount of space inside the case to accommodate the insane amount of flex and I was surprised to hear little to no hollowness which is great. I think the overall sound profile of this board is on the deeper end as is with most plateless boards and to be quite honest I personally don't really recommend using any foam at all except the PE foam which I unfortunately had to use due to the leg 
uh, loose leg cutouts, but I think I would have enjoyed this without the PE foam as well. Now with the topic of loose switches, let's segue into the cons of the board. And I say cons loosely here because many of the points I bring up st will still be preference based, and I just want to mention them. First off, something not preference based, the loose switches. This honestly gave me a huge headache and I nearly just threw this board on the ground after spending a stupid amount of time trying to get the switches to stay on this thing. I don't know if my PCB was just faulty or if my switches are whack. I tried different switches as well but they were all loose but yeah the PCB had very loose switch leg cutout tolerances that made it nearly impossible to build without PE foam to keep the switches a bit more in place. I really, really hope that this is just an issue with this early unit, but I think that this is something that I need to point out because I nearly just, I nearly just gave up this entire review because of that, because uh, of the build process. Not gonna lie. Second con. Now this is a much more preference-based con, but the thing with the plateless boards is that it could very well get fatiguing after quite a while. This thing is so soft and so bouncy that your fingertips is very much constantly stimulated as you type. There's constant vibrations at the end of your fingertips. This may be something that may be enjoyable to some, but some could find this uh, getting pretty tiring pretty fast. I personally like this feeling a lot, so I wouldn't really put this as a con for me, but I just wanted to throw it out there because it is a potential issue that some people might have if they plan on using this as their only daily driver forever, you know? However, I do think that adding the case foam and the plate will drastically lower the amount of flex and vibrations and sort of make this your standard, you know, gasket mounted TKL. Uh, but why would you really want to do that? To me personally, this is made for plateless and plateless is just too damn good to pass up. Overall, for the estimated $400 price range, I gotta come out and say that this board is very fucking good, especially if you love Plateless. I took a look at the Hex 4B last month and that board was a banger for sure, but this board right here is a TKL that really nails it like the Hex 4B did in terms of the Plateless typing experience. It's a bit more expensive, but honestly the build quality is top notch besides the PCB, and this offers a very unique typing feel for a TKL, as you barely ever see playlist TKLs coming out. Honestly, I think this board is worth picking up for sure if you are looking for a good high-end TKL under 500, or if you want to join the base club of plateless enjoyers. I'm excited to see more plateless boards come out this year, cause man, I fucking love them. Anyways guys, thank you guys so much for all the support. We hit 74k as well. God damn. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Uh, cheers to the new year and uh, more reviews on the way soon and more just general videos. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.